Before I show you my chat with Mark Lewis, I just want to thank you for watching this video. Please remember to comment, like, subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel so I can make more videos like this. I really enjoyed chatting to Mark Lewis. Uh, the standout thing that blew my mind was that he takes a week to create a 10 minute video, but looking at the quality of his videos, I'm really not surprised. And um, if there's anyone else you would like me to chat to or link up with on this channel, please drop it in the comments below and I'll try and make it happen. Enjoy. To do this for two hours solid is insane. I mean, two hours is a, it's a long movie. As two minutes is coming up, I'm glad it's almost over because falling over is becoming a distinct possibility. Compare that to Kipchoge with 200 meters to go in his run. Hi guys, I'm Nick Bester. I am the founder of Best Athletics. And today I am joined by a very special guest, um, someone that I look up to in the YouTube world. I've watched a lot of his videos. Um, he has over 250,000 subscribers, um, some videos with some, some really big views, um, including one with over 4 million views. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Mark Lewis. If I look at one of the, the videos that really caught my attention initially, um, and I think it caught a lot of our attention in the running world, uh, because we want to know just how quick Kipchoge runs and, and obviously um, having done that marathon in sub two hours. Um, I was inspired by your video to actually try it myself. So just this week recently, I, I gave it a go. Um, but yeah, I mean, talk us through it. It was incredible to, to watch it. Um, how did you find the whole experience and how honestly, like how hard a bit of behind the scenes info did you find running at his speed? I know you, you, you made two videos about it. Yeah, if I, I've... I've kind of done a few now in fact we, we so the first video uh the first video was inspired uh because i saw um i saw a video put up by actually i forget who even put the video up but basically it was a it was a setup where they had the the giant travelator machine running at uh, a fitness expo or somewhere and they had people trying to run at kipchoge's pace on this giant treadmill if you've not seen it i mean just imagine a a giant treadmill you know things about eight feet across and sort of 25 foot 30 foot long and you, you it goes at Kipchoge's pace and you try and run on it and when you can't run anymore you you fall over quite comically so I, I saw that taking place and I thought uh that that well I first of all I thought that's got a huge number of views was my uh was my, my first impression I thought I'll, I'll go and make the same uh, but I have no access to that equipment so I'll just go to my local gym I'll drag my kid along with a camera uh, we'll we'll jack the treadmill up to Kipchoge pace and I'll run on it and we'll make a video and maybe 12 people will watch it. And so that's what we did. We just spent 15 minutes in my local gym. I started off running slow and then ran at Kipchoge pace. I say ran at Kipchoge pace. The treadmill in our gym only went to 20 kilometers per hour. And Kipchoge's pace for his, certainly for his sub two uh, marathon was uh, slightly above 20 kilometers per hour. So it wasn't quite fast enough. But well, I ran on it anyway, and yeah, I mean, it exhausted me. I mean, it was, it was incredibly hard. I mean, I should I should add, in case anyone's unaware, uh, I'm six foot six, so what is that? One ninety eight in in centimeters, uh, about two hundred twenty pounds, so hundred kilos. So I'm I'm about as far removed as you can get from Kipchoge, who's about five foot six and about fifty five kilos. So I'm kind of double his weight and and a foot taller. So it it was very very hard for me, as it would be hard for anybody. I think I lasted maybe three minutes, two, two and a half minutes. It wasn't very long. I mean, it certainly wasn't two hours. And, and after, yeah, two minutes. And that, right, oh, there you go. So I mean, it's so long ago, I can't remember. And then I crumbled on the floor. And I, I had this footage of me basically doing that. And I came back home and thought, well, yeah, that's, what is that? that yeah, where's the story there? Because I like my videos to be a, a bit more than just here's what I did. So... I sort of constructed it into a, a sort of a tale of how anybody running at any pace from real slow to Kipchoge pace might recognize their pace at various points on that on that journey. So, for example, you know, here's here's a 45 minute 5K park run pace and, and, and now it's a 30 minute park run and now it's a whatever, a one and a half hour half marathon or something. The idea being that people that could do those would sort of go, hey, that's me. That's, you know, I recognize that pace. And, and, and wow, it's still so far removed from what Kipchoge is doing. So we did that. And we stuck the video up. And, and yeah, it, it, did, it did very well. Um, it, I mean, quite literally, it did well enough that it allowed me to quit my job. Um, and and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, when I say that, it, it sounds like it, 
it made so much money. I mean, that, that's not really what happened. What, what happened was it, I was on the verge of considering it anyway, and it just made me think, okay, you know, the, the, these things can happen. Let, let's, let's go for it and just hope they happen lots. Um, so it, it prompted me to do it rather than allowed me to do it. Um, and then, yeah, then I, and then we did a couple more where we went to the, an actual running track. And I'd never used a running track in my life until two years ago, ever. So I went to a running track and just kind of grabbed some people out of a local gym and had them try and run a single lap at Kipchoge's pace, which again proved to be very hard for most normal people to get close to. Um, and then most recently, I actually found the guys that owned the giant treadmill and went and ran on the actual giant treadmill. Um, and that was that was just hilarious because because it's quite terrifying because it yeah, unlike running when you're running on the road or, or 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 even a treadmill a regular gym treadmill where you can sort of grab hold of it and jump off there's no jumping off the giant treadmill uh, it, you you either slow down with it or as I had happened to me you reach a point of exhaustion and and then have to stop but but the ground under you isn't. And therefore, you just fall off, and then you shoot backwards and disappear off the back of the machine, which is, uh, for YouTube purposes, is delightful. I mean, it, you know, everyone likes to see uh, someone big and cumbersome getting thrown around. It's a, it's a, it's a comical scene. So, so yeah, they're the things I've done, and at every point that the backdrop to it has been, yeah, Kipchoge is running fast. I mean, people watch him on TV or, or indeed any distance runner, and think, wow, that guy's jogging real quick. You know, that's not what he's doing. He's running at a speed that most people can't run at, full stop. Forget two hours. Most people can't run, as we discovered, they can't run around a track at his speed. I mean, he's doing one minute, I think it was one minute, eight second laps. Uh, yeah, so 68 seconds. And obviously, if you're if you're a good athlete, you're, you're probably going to go quicker than that for a lap. Um, I, I can for a single lap. But, but Joe Bloggs off the street... Yeah, most of them aren't getting close to that, and they certainly aren't doing it for two hours straight. So yeah, it, it highlighted how 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 incredible he is, which is what we wanted to do. It's one of the coolest things about the running sports is that everyone can try it, right? It's like you can actually just try and get a perspective of how good the world's best are, um, and that's the cool thing about uh, replicating that down time down to a four hundred meter rep uh, in sixty eight seconds is that the everyday runner can actually try, whereas if you in a different sport, you can't just you know go and face Brett Lee a, a ball at Brett Lee's pace, or you know get tackled by Peter Steff to toy in rugby or something like that. So that's where it's really cool, and a, and a massive part of why um, I love running so much is that it's level for everyone. Like Kipchoge, okay, that was a specific challenge, but if you look at Calvin Kiptum's world record um, that he did in Chicago, you know you've got forty, fifty thousand people doing the race in those conditions as well. It's the same for everyone. Um, and I just love that we can put things into perspective for the everyday runner. And I think one of the really cool things about um, your video is that you, you make it relatable. So, you know, people see themselves throughout that, those paces and think, oh, is that, that's what my legs look like when, when they're going at sort of seven minutes a K, six minutes a K, five minutes a K. Um, so, yeah, really cool. Just going back to that video. So you said it was actually pretty uh, a pretty big turning point in your career. You were thinking about going full time. Um, and that video sort of, you know, gave you enough traction to be able to say, let's go for it. And I'm sure from the looks of things, you haven't looked back once, like you're gaining more and more traction. It's awesome to see, um, you very well spoken about in, in the running community. Um, and your videos are just absolutely freaking awesome. They insightful, um, they're humorous and they're, they're cool to watch, but going back to that video and I know cause, cause I can probably relate in some sort of way. Um, sometimes it's those videos that that take quite quick to make that you think let's give it a shot and you don't think it'll get much traction that tend to blow up so how much time actually went into making that video um compared to some of the others that you've planned and how much traction did it get compared to some of the others and why do you think that is do you think it's because of youtube youtube algorithms or do you think it's just because it was relatable uh, yeah i mean the, the answer to that question is um the, the bottom line is absolutely no idea, really. I mean, part part of the frustration of being a YouTuber is that it isn't. Um, I mean, on the one hand, it's not a science uh, because you are you're doing something creative and you're then trying to appeal to people's um, yeah their imagination, their motivation. I mean, it's it's, a, it's an emotive thing, uh, and 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 that isn't a science. You can't just say, well, if you do this, this will happen. 
And on top of that, you then have the YouTube algorithm, which is, I mean, that probably is a science, but it's a science that's beyond me. So everything that goes into the sort of the, into the melting pot to create a great video is, is I mean, those are ingredients that are just very hard to kind of select. So to, I mean, to answer your question specifically, it took very little time to make the video because because making I mean there's different parts to a process of of, of making a video. Typically, there's for me and I I differ a lot to many other YouTubers. There's writing the video, so I, I write and script my video, and then there will be shooting the video, and then there's editing the video, kind of which is kind of the creation process. Uh, for me, that one didn't require much writing in advance because we sort of just spur the moment, just went to the gym and filmed it. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes we just film something and then have the footage and look at the footage and think, okay, now we write the story. What's the story here? So filming it, very, very quick. Writing the story to go with it is then a laborious process that takes, I mean, it, it can take, it can easily take days. I mean, it, it can take weeks to write a to write, I mean, and people often think, what are you talking about writing? It sounds very kind of pretentious for a YouTube video, and, and, and maybe is, because other people might just take the footage and think, let's just throw it up on YouTube and we're, we're done. But, but I like to kind of, I like to be able to look at my video afterwards and think, okay, that was a setup, that was the, the kind of conflict that I overcame, and that's the resolution, and, and write a story, basically. Um, and, and so that part is a bit long-winded, and, and then and then edit, and then actually filming the the, 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 the the kind of the conversation I'm having with the camera and, and so for example that that footage of Kipchoge it wasn't just pictures of me running on the treadmill over the top of it you've got me kind of documenting what I did and giving it some context and hopefully giving it some humor as well uh, filming that's pretty quick but then editing it all together because I have little idea especially then little idea about what I'm doing in terms of video editing because I'm because I don't know I'm, I'm self-taught uh, from from only a few years ago, that then is is also very long. So so the long 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 answer to, to an easy question probably took about a week to create that video. Um, I mean, and in terms of what other videos can take, that's probably about standard. We try and put up a video a week, and it and it, it does really require a week of work to get a finished product, and that's working full time. I mean, I don't people sometimes think that we just we just kind of do very little because they they'll think a video is made on a saturday and uploaded on a sunday and we've then got the week off but but the reality is the videos are normally filmed on a sunday uh then worked on all week uploaded on a sunday and it immediately starts again uh in terms of what we yeah, you know, when we upload something do we think that's gonna you know that's had a large amount of work so it's going to do well that that ratio isn't really it i mean sometimes there are things we think that should do well and it may or may not have been a large amount of work. I mean, a good example is I did a video recently where I tried to race against uh, the world's fastest nine-year-old park runner. Uh, yeah, and I that was a that was a sort of video where I thought this has the potential to, to get some traction. It, it's a nice story. Um, it, you know, the thumbnail is going to look funny because it's me huge and him tiny. Uh, th th yeah, this has all the kind of ingredients of, of something that will go and, and do well, and, and it did. So that was an example where we thought it's going to take a lot of time to film. You know, we have to travel, we have to film it, we have to edit it. We, we constructed the edit in such a way that it was a, a, a pleasant thing to watch. It wasn't just kind of GoPro footage of someone running around a track. There was more to it. And, and we uploaded it and we thought this should do well. And it did, which is all good. But then equally, we've had identical videos in terms of thought process where we thought this will do well. It's taken time, it's taken effort, we upload it and, and it just falls flat. So, um, you know, it, it's very, very hard. When, when something goes viral, it, I mean, virals are, you know, different people would define viral differently. Um, you know, Mr. Beast wouldn't regard 4 million views as, as viral, but, but I, for me, we, we would. So when it goes viral for us, we normally know why. The, you know, we can look at it and go, okay, we see why that happened. But, but frustratingly, when it doesn't go viral, um, or indeed even do well, we can't necessarily tell why. That, that's the, but that's the frustration of YouTube. Um, and equally, I've done videos where I've thought, you know, I've got nothing to talk about this week, so I'll just talk about some, you know, five things I did last year that kind of made me a bit more positive than normal. And I just kind of st I just talk to camera and stick it up, and and then you know it goes and does a few hundred thousand views, and, and we just we think crikey, we might as well just do that every week. So it's just very very hard. I mean, being a YouTuber is. Um, 
I mean, I say it's very, very hard. Clearly, the, you know, there's, if, if you've just come back from, I don't know, doing a proper job, you're probably thinking, what's this idiot talking about? It's not hard at all. Um, it, it, it's very hard to know what's going to work. That, that's for sure. Sure. I mean, I, I can relate myself. Um, and thanks for, for giving us a, quite a lot of insight there. I think a lot of us will just watch your video and no one really thinks it takes a week to make this video, like a, a 10 minute video, right? Um, and I think that's given context to a, a lot of us watching next time. We're going to think, okay, cool. You know, there's, there was a lot of planning in this. Um, the filming was the quickest part and then editing, getting your points across. Um, and I think like on, on to that point, um, as far as video editing goes, you say you pretty much self taught, you, you sort of grasping things as you go along. You are obviously pretty up to speed at the moment. Are you editing your own videos? Are you in a position where you can completely edit them or do you still get a little bit of help to try and, you know, get them really looking world-class in certain stages? Um, I, yeah, I've never had any help. Every, every video you'll ever have seen of mine ever has been created entirely by me. So on, on day one, um, when my kid said to me, um, you'd find it impossible to ever make a video as good as me, he'd made some stupid Minecraft video or something. I said, well, I, I, bet, I, I bet I could, I bet I could film my... Uh, my, my holiday, my next holiday, and stick it on YouTube and get more views than you. And he said, I bet you can't. So I, I went out, I bought, I, I bought a camera, I bought an Apple Mac, and, and, I, and I just kind of set about teaching myself how. I, mean, I didn't know anything, and people think I kind of exaggerate. Like, for example, I didn't know how to cut footage. I mean, in terms of editing, I, didn't, I knew nothing. I mean, I, I can't describe this more clearly than that. You could have plucked someone from... You know, 1500, that person would know as much about computer editing as I did. So I started with zero knowledge and, and I've just kind of progressed slowly. So, for example, what will happen is that um, I'll often watch another person's video and I'm very, very mindful of not ever copying somebody else. It's very, very easy if you, if you like other people to suddenly find yourself churning out what you think is what they would do. And it, it, just, it, just, it just comes across very badly. Um, so I'm very mindful of not doing that. But I'll see a tiny thing they do and think, oh, I like that. Um, and I then learn how to do that. So a good example is that park run uh, video with a the, with the little kid. I'd seen somebody else's video where they had a graphic displaying how fast a car was going, I think it was. And as the car drove along the track, the graphic stayed uh, positioned beside the car despite it moving around the screen. I thought, oh, that's really cool. No idea how that's done. Uh, and again, people that know video editing are probably thinking this is, you know, kind of, day one lessons oh, I had no idea so I go off and I find out how and I learn how and I then implement it in that video and as I'm running along there's little graphics of me saying how fast I did that lap that sit beside me despite me moving around the screen and so I try and learn something like that every time um, but but yeah it does take it does take a long time I mean as a, a good example of of all of that kind of encompassed into into one is that I watched a lot of Mr Beast videos recently and I, I realized that uh, this might appear obvious when you're watching his stuff in, in the first 10 seconds, 15 seconds, there will have been just an absolute, just a nonstop barrage of cuts and edits and things flashing up on the screen. I mean, your senses are just overloaded. It, it's, 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 it's nonstop. And in contrast, when you watch a lot of fitness YouTubers, um, particularly at the, at the sort of the smaller end, I mean, the, the, the guys that are nailing it know what they're doing, but, but at the smaller end at my end, a lot of fitness YouTubers will start with a kind of chat to camera and they're making a coffee and they're kind of like, you know, hey, here's my day. It's going to, and, and within a minute, a minute's gone. And actually, all that's happened is they're still talking to you in their kitchen about what they're going to do. And I thought, okay, well, Mr. Beast isn't an idiot. What I need to do to stand aside from the, the other fitness YouTubers is, is have content that in the first 30 seconds has so much going on that people almost are too dazzled to, to skip to something else. Because that's the reality. The reality is that someone turns on a video and, and they are likely to skip to the next video because that's what we do. We just scroll, scroll, scroll. So you need to grab them. So my introductions now normally take place in about 40 seconds before I go to a sort of a credit scene. And I try and make that 40 seconds to just have a, a constant stream of stuff, whether it's text flashing up on screen or imagery or, or cuts or edits. I have things going on. And that means that that first... 40 seconds can easily take me five hours, six hours sometimes to do that 40 seconds. Because if I don't have people entertained for those 40 seconds, they aren't there for the, the next nine and a half minutes anyway. So 
in terms of duration, I mean, sometimes my wife will come in and say, how's the video going? And I say, yeah, I'm on, I'm on second 32. And she says, it's been, it's been a day. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, I, I, might get, I might get the intro finished by tomorrow. After that, it flows a bit more readily because once you've got people on board, you, you can kind of back off a bit and you can be a bit more uh, graceful with your presentation. But for me, those, those initial 30, 40 seconds, I want people to just think, um, well, well, the most important thing is I want them to not think, uh, where's this going? I mean, a good example, again, is Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast, if he's doing a video about trapping people on a desert island, he'll start on the desert island. You know, that's where the, it's bang. We're on an island and this is going to happen. There's no kind and, and and again, there's no, uh, here's how I bought the island. Here's us getting to the island. Here's, here's why we're doing it. There's none of that, which, of course, most people would be compelled to do. So a good example of that in the fitness world is if you're watching somebody that's taking part in an event, often that person will start their content by saying, oh, I'm off to an event today, and here's me in the car, and here's me getting ready, and here's me putting on my race bib number. And and what I like to do is is to just go, I'm in an event, and it's happening, and here we go. And And if I need to cover putting on a bib, I'll talk later on about before this event, I put on a bib. But I want to get into the fact that I'm doing that race, and it's happening there, and it's, you know, boom, off we go. Um, which it, which it, it's a Mr. Beast thing. It's it's we're on the island. Kind of who cares why? You know, you, you got a million questions like, how did you get an island? Forget that. That's not important. We're on it and we're off. Your point makes so much sense. We're living in a day and age where there's just um, so much content, and you know, people are getting quicker with things, um, and life's just getting quicker, and content in the same way needs to go in that way because our, our minds are so active and busy so unless you capture their attention drastically in the, in the, the beginning you know they'll, they'll skip through or there's no ways you'll capture them for, for the whole time um, and ultimately they're watching the video for that sweet piece that you're giving them a taste of in the beginning and then showing how it plays out so you're really good tips and advice to to other people making videos out there and, and it applies to all storytelling. I mean, a good example at the moment is is everyone's watching Jack Reacher on TV. Um, the, 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 yeah, the, the, if you've not seen it, the, the, the first season of Jack Reacher, which is based on the first Jack Reacher novel, starts with him getting arrested. I mean, that's the first thing that happens. In fact, I think the opening line to the novel might even be something like, I got arrested in the diner. That's, and, and the idea is, that's where we're going to start. We're starting in the action and, and why I got arrested, and, and you know, we'll deal with that in in you know chapter four. What well, you know, we are going to start in the thick of it, and and then work, and then and then kind of fill in the gaps if we need, even if if we need to. Because sometimes, do you need to fill in the gap? I mean, if actually if your event is exciting enough, why you're doing it is is kind of perhaps you know superfluous. So. Yeah, like, like any decent story, when you sit down and watch a movie or something, I mean, James Bond is a classic example where James Bond always opens with just, it's, we're straight in, it's just action. Why is this happening? Who cares? A chase is on. So I, I try and do that. I try and tell a story, but, but from the first second, have people understand where we're going with it and, and, and be interested to see what happens. And starting that by kind of, you know, here's me pretending to get out of bed and make a coffee, if it works, that's amazing. And there are some people that do that very well. But, but for me, I, I was always left thinking, well, if I, if I watched the new James Bond film and it started with James Bond kind of getting out of bed gently and, and having a coffee and, and not chasing someone and shooting them, I, I'd be feeling like, I, I think, well, this, what, what's this? this? This isn't for me, you know. Definitely. Um, yeah, but okay. So being a full-time YouTuber, right? I know you said sometimes you spend like four to five hours creating the first few seconds of the video as they're the most important. Obviously, YouTube, um, you know, it's predominantly a full-time job and stuff like that. But how frustrating is it spending that much time for such a small section of watched footage? Obviously, it's the most important, but is there an element of frustration? The reason why I'm asking is because I spent about five hours making my video uh, two days ago, which I thought would take about an hour and a half. So uh, I'm not a full-time YouTuber, um, but that extra three and a half hours was like, I was like, ah, oh, I'm enjoying making this video, but it's eating into my, you know, my training time. It's eating into my, my sort of client time. And these videos for me always seem to take longer than expected. 
um, and obviously the more efforts and stuff you put into it. Maybe I'll get a bit better at video editing one day, but do you feel that same sort of sense of frustration sometimes when you're spending so long on such a small portion of the video, um, but it's worth it at the end of the day? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, I feel frustration. And I should also add that, that because some people now, especially if, uh, I know what will happen, people that are decent video editors will watch some of my intros and think, what, what's this joker taking, you know, this is this take me half an hour, and they'll, they'll be sending me emails saying, you know, let me do your editing. Um, so part of that lengthy process comes down to my, just, just my current level of ability. Um, uh, and part of it comes down to my, uh, persistence at, at trying to perfect something that doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, I think uh, Casey Neistat is a YouTuber that I watched a lot uh, who said, yeah, um, I forget the exact quote, but but something along the lines of um, uh, kind of uh, perfection is the enemy of good enough or something to those along those lines. Basically, it, you know, there, 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 there comes a point where you think this this will do and, and, and the extra work required to get it even better just becomes um, not not worthless, but but your your um, you're getting kind of diminishing returns for, for ongoing effort. So that also causes, and I'm not very good at, at saying that'll do, and I, and I should say that'll do sooner. Um, so there's that. But but uh, but no, ultimately it takes a long time and it's very frustrating and I wish I could do it quicker. Uh, but but what, what normally happens and what's quite handy for my content is that I, I, I call myself sometimes a fitness YouTuber, a fitness YouTuber, but, but almost by mistake, I'm a YouTuber. And I happen to be doing fitness. I'm not a fitness YouTuber. I've got no qualifications. I've got no, which is why I never tell people what to do ever. My channel is never about copy me, do what I do. Never about that. It's about motivation, entertainment. If they find something interesting and informative, great. So I'm always going after a slightly comedic angle because because the one thing I can do is is I can hopefully be quite funny. Uh, and people, people say I am. So at least some of the people watching agree, uh, which is which is good enough for me. So. I'm often finishing those first 40 seconds with a joke. I mean, that, in fact, that's the ideal. The ideal scenario is that first 40 seconds finishes with a joke, and also the video in general finishes with a joke. So people are happy to watch the next one. That's, I always want to end on a joke. So, in fact, to me, my first 40 seconds, are they're like my kind of uh, friends TV show. It always starts with a cold open, uh, or more recently, the, you know, the American office. It starts with a cold open, there'll be a joke, and then it cuts to credits. That's my kind of template that I'm using. And, and what I do is, I, I, if I stop laughing at my own joke, this sounds very kind of um, egotistical, but when I write that first joke, I need to laugh at it. If I don't laugh, if I'm not laughing, at least inside, if not outside, literally, at what I've written, then it's not funny. So I need to laugh at it, first of all. And if, if after editing it for five hours, I've lost the ability to laugh at it, then I would be getting disappointed. But But... I'm either I'm very easily pleased or, or the process goes okay because I normally find that after five hours I can watch back the the, the finished footage or, or, or the, the perhaps finished footage still chuckle and and then I know yeah this this, this is still going okay yeah the minute I started watching back my funny stuff and thought yeah whatever don't I don't uh, yeah, it's not funny anymore I, I would um uh, that that would kind of rip it out out for me it's a bit like um I don't know maybe. I have no other creative abilities, but but maybe a, a painter that kind of paints an amazing painting, and they, you know, they're on it for for months, perhaps. But but still, they step back from it and and kind of appreciate the beauty of what they're doing. And, and I guess if they ever stepped back from it and and thought, I don't, I don't even see it anymore, uh, then they you know they're probably chucking it in the bin. So for me, there's there's always this nice sort of measure. Uh, it's kind of like a canary in the mine. If I'm not laughing still. And being entertained by myself, then how on earth are other people gonna gonna find it that? If I was just making educational or informative content, it might be a bit trickier because but because I've got nothing to measure it against. I know the information I'm putting across, so I'm not expecting to kind of that nothing's going to change no matter what I do with it. But but with with comedy in particular, it it, it needs to be funny. It's either funny or it's not. It, you know, it's, it's different. If I was saying, you know, zone two training is good. That's just a constant. No matter, yeah, I can, I can work on that video for for, for three weeks, and, and zone two training is still good. But if I think this joke is funny, and at some point it becomes not, then then I I you know, worry. And luckily for me, that 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 doesn't happen. Or if it does happen, that's you know I I've been it. I, I have done that. I've I've thought no, that I thought it was funny when I wrote it. I watched it fifteen times. It's not so funny anymore. So it's gone. 
Um, so that that's yeah, comedy is comedy is quite nice to edit with because um, because it either is or it isn't, uh, and when it isn't, it goes. It's as simple as that. Whereas whereas you know, informative content is trickier because there's lots of informative content where you think well, that's still valid, it's still informative, but is it informative enough? And it becomes quite subjective. To me, either I'm laughing or I'm not. I, lo I love that side to it because, you know, fitness, it, it can get serious sometimes, right? And, and we can get serious and terminology can get confusing and we can get ourselves worked up because uh, ultimately it's hard. It's hard work that goes into it. But apart from that, you've got to enjoy it and see the humorous side. Otherwise, life just gets serious. So, yeah, your jokes are freaking awesome. Please keep including them. Um, in your videos, they, they definitely get us laughing. Kudos to you because the the easy way out would be, um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people get in touch with you to do your video editing, help you out with certain things. And, you know, part of your character, um, and I suppose a lot of it is a fitness mindset and, and a runner's mindset is that, you know, you often want to just try and see how far you can go yourself and do things yourself and learn yourself. Um, and that would be the quick, easy way um but you've stuck with it and i think you know editing yourself and even if it's not your expertise you definitely can do things in a way that you want to do them and make it more personal um and at the end of the day you know people watch your videos for you not for your video editing obviously that does help get make it slicker and stuff but at the same time you know they're not specifically watching you for your graphics and your video editing so it's important but it's not the be all and, and end all yeah actually, I, actually on that point it's interesting actually what one of the reasons why uh the editing i i, I one of the reasons why I, I won't ever have someone edit my videos uh, at least I, I can't foresee that ever being the case uh, is that it comes down to the objective a lot of fitness youtubers are on youtube uh, and understandably so because they their objective is large numbers of viewers because that then feeds into maybe their training program sales or their their other business, and, and that, that makes perfect sense. So they are on YouTube to get eyes on their other stuff. Uh, and, and sometimes it's simply a case of getting eyes on the, the merchandise they're now trying to flog for somebody else. And most, most people, are, you know, they, they see getting a sponsor or, or you know, an ambassador deal or something as being a kind of the holy grail of YouTube. And, and again, that, that's fine. So that's their objective. And therefore, if someone says, I'll edit your videos and I'll get you more eyes on whatever it is you want, then they're moving towards their objective. For me, my objective when I sit down to create a YouTube video is to create a good YouTube video. That's it. Uh, a bit like the artist. And again, this gets all very pretentious. But, but uh, yeah, my, my objective is that creation of that thing. So when people do say to me, and it happens all the time, they say, and they're quite blunt. They say, your stuff's rubbish. If you let me edit it, it'll be better. I, I don't want them to edit it. That's literally like going to the artist and saying, put down your paintbrush, let me paint it, and you can go and do, you can go and do some marketing for your art. The guy's like, well, hang on a minute, I, I love painting. That's why I'm, you know, no. So that, that's, it's all about objective. For me, uh, we, we, we turn down advertisers. We don't do sponsorship. We do none of that um, because I'm here to, to make a video. And, and so somebody else trying to make my video defeats my objective. For other people, understandably, that isn't the case. I get that completely. So, so it helps me. It's very easy for me to say no to help because they're trying to do what I want to do. You know, they're not, they're not actually helping me. Doing what I love doing, taking it off of me, uh, is, of, is of no help. Okay, so I asked, uh, I put up on my Instagram um, a question poll to see if anyone had questions for you. There were quite a few questions, but I'll just run through a couple of them. Um, the first of which, and you're obviously not a coach, but you've gone through this transformation yourself so you can give advice in your personal capacity on how you felt. Um, as a runner, a lot of us are hearing how important strength and conditioning is. Um, I'm a coach myself and you know I encourage my, my athletes to do it. But someone uh, in your case that has recently gone through a transformation, as we call it almost the dad body look you went for, um, and then you you ran before sort of during that phase. You're now looking, you know, pretty in pretty good shape at the moment. Okay, you're on the way back. I can tell. I can see your some nice um, cheekbones coming through there. Um, but anyways, how like important is that strength work um, when you're sort of out of shape to get back into shape to get to perform to your best of your ability? Uh, for for me, strength. I mean, strength work is. Uh, I, I almost don't. I, and again, the, the, I'm helped by not being a proper athlete in the sense that I'm not a competitive athlete. So I'm just someone that's trying to stay fit and healthy. 
So I, I almost, I don't really look at it as strength work. I just look at it as some days I go to the gym, I lift heavy things, and some days I go out for a run, and and, and I don't. So so I don't, I don't kind of segregate it in any way. I have very a very very loose training program. You wouldn't even call it a training program. I just wake up and think, what do I feel like doing today? Unless I'm training for something very very specific. So. Um, at the end of the week, if I looked back and thought oh, I ran three times, I did a I did a bike ride on Zwift, I did a bunch of stretching, but I didn't lift anything heavy at all. I would kind of feel like I'd missed something, and vice versa if I'd only lifted. So, is it important? Yes, but but, but I don't need to think about it because that's like saying. You know, is it important to put on, you know, a T-shirt along with my jeans? Yeah, I just kind of put all my clothes on as I need them. So it, the strength, that, that just happens. I just happen to do that. Um, I mean, it, it, one of the reasons that back of my mind for doing it is, I, again, I'm six foot six. And if I just did endurance training, I would I would, I would take on a, a slightly different look. Uh, I would be very tall, very lean. Uh, and there is, I mean, I, I like looking the way I look for me, but there's no doubt. It, it plays, I mean, almost unfortunately, it plays better on YouTube in the fitness world if you if you look, um, and bottom line is that the, to a certain extent, the, the bigger and more jacked you are, yeah, the, the, the more views you're going to get. Uh, that, it'd be great if that wasn't the case, but but that isn't. So I, I can't look too average all the time. I need to look, I need to look muscular. One of the things I have going for me is that I am big and heavy, but can still run. And the easiest way to convey that I'm big and heavy is to look quite big and heavy. So, so I, I, I still, so that's why I strength train. But, but for me, if I wasn't doing YouTube, yeah, I'd wake up one day and think, I, uh, today's a good example. I've done no training at all, at all today, so I have to train later on. And at the moment, I've got no idea whether that's going to be an hour's run or, or get in the gym. I don't know. But whatever it is, it'll be the opposite tomorrow. I just kind of bounce around doing a bit of everything. We live in different universes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm obviously a, a marathon runner, so I know exactly what I'm doing on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And um, I'm sure a few people can relate to me and to you. Um, and and if, if I don't get my session in on that day, I've kind of, I, I judge my days of the week by knowing what sessions I'm doing. So I do a track or interval session on a Tuesday. And there's been times in the past where my little one's been sick or, you know, the race schedule means I have to, change things or there's travel so I end up doing track on a Wednesday and my whole week is completely thrown off I don't know what day of the week it is um, and yours is just different you wake up uh, do I feel like this do I want to do this um, maybe I'll do that one I don't know what I'm going to be doing in an hour's time but I'll be doing something I say I'll be doing something it's a Friday so uh, actually I even had to check myself was it even Friday it is um, I, I may even just take the day off I mean it's it, and if I do I don't care I'll do something tomorrow instead um, what, one of the benefits I have is that I'm 50, and uh, at 50, you, you you don't care less, but but you're a bit more selective about what you care about. Um, I've done many many things and seen many things, and 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 when I look back on the things that are important to me, none of those things, none of those highlight reels in my kind of head of my life are, are races I ran or you know, deadlifts I managed and stuff like that. It, 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 it's, you know, it, it's, I don't know, it's traveling across Namibia on a motorbike and, and or it's, it's being on the, you know, the peaks of the mountains in the Pyrenees and seeing sunsets and stuff. And so I value my health and my fitness and I value the training that gives it to me, but I don't stand it on a pedestal and I don't need to because I'm not, a, I'm, again, I'm not a competitive athlete. So I get away with, you know, when people say to me, well, I don't do that because I need to win the next race because that's what I do makes perfect sense for me um it, it simply doesn't matter i don't i don't live in as you say we're, we're in we're in different worlds um and and, and which is cool uh, that, that's what makes that's what makes life so exciting i love talking to people about their compulsions to to dominate the world they're in i love talking to elite sports people because it's just such a fascinating insight into a different world for me um so so yeah so no i i, I love hearing everyone's different versions of how they get through the day for me Mine's pretty, mine's pretty easy. Hearing you explain it, I think a lot of runners that are relating to the way I train and the way the weekly schedule has to look, it kind of makes us a little bit jealous in a way because it must be nice to live a life like that. So in my mind, I keep saying, I think the next, you know, sort of five or so years are probably my peak years of running. And, um, you know, I've worked up into this position. 
um, to try and give things a really good go. And then I hope by the time I am sort of, you know, 50 your age, I'll decide, I'll wake up and be like, mm, I feel like playing golf today or uh, let me take the dog on this park run type thing. But yeah, I keep saying that. But um, at the moment, the thing that really, you know, excites me is just, you know, trying to improve because I know it's a limited time and uh, I'm on the verge. It was interesting because, yeah, you see, you, you have a limited time left uh, at your peak. My peak has long since gone. I have a limited time left on earth. So it, it's a it's a different thing. You know, if someone, if someone said to you, you've got, you know, a week of your peak left, what do you want to do? You would probably pick to do something that maximized the fact you've got a week of peak left. You might go and race. If someone said to me, you've got a week on earth left, I'm not running anywhere. I, I, I'm, I'm taking my wife uh, and maybe my kids, depending on how well they behave they are, and I'm going somewhere cool. Um, so we're, we're in different, we're at different points in time. Oh man, that's awesome. I'd, I'd like to say if I had a week to a week, um, left to live on this earth, I'd, I'd probably still fit in a couple of runs. That's just where I am. <laughs> um, and then, and then that actually brings me into, to the next question. Um, and it's probably the answer to this. I might be able to answer this for you and say, I don't know, depends how you feel, but someone asked, um, you obviously got into, you said you went to a track for the first time two years ago. Um, when is your next track race? Like, do you have any sort of race lined up? And no, uh, and, and but but we're working on it. I mean, but basically, what's happened this year? Quite interestingly, uh, this this kind of comes back to being YouTube um, uh, inverted commas famous. What happened last year is we ran a lot of races, a lot of events, and after we did the event, the person that ran the event would get in contact and say, "Hey, we saw you put our event on YouTube. We'd love you to you know do it again. We'd have, we'd have we'd have given you a free entry if we'd known." And we're like, ah, we should have, um, we should have asked them in advance. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we've done this year is we've gone out to a whole bunch of people that do all sorts of things, cycling events and running events and obstacle course races. And we basically said, look, we want to fill our diary this year with stuff. And, and if we need to, we'll just buy it all like we did last year. We have no problem with that. But it would be silly not to ask you if you want to kind of be involved in that. So we're going to wait. And already people are coming back and they're saying, yeah, it'd be amazing. You know, do our race and stick it on YouTube. It costs us nothing to give you entry and, and, and it's good for you. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be compiling basically a whole long list of things we're going to then pick to do. Uh, and, and, and we'll then know by the end of February what our, what our year looks like. But as it stands at the moment, we have nothing. But that, that's only because of that process. We will be doing uh, lots uh, and a lot of cycling this, this year. I, I kind of feel that because I did a lot of high rocks training last year, I missed out on my cycling. So I'm, I'm and, and I like cycling um, because I'm big. It doesn't it doesn't slow me down, or it slows me down because I'm heavy, but it doesn't pound my body the way that running can. Uh, so I like mixing up my running with some cycling. So so yeah, no idea at the moment, but there will be lots. A few races um, on the horizon. Okay, cool. If you're looking for a good challenge between now and then, <clears throat> I actually. Uh, really would like to take you on in the handicap race. So pretty much the way that would work is we'd do a 5k um, and you would say, I think I'm in 24 minute shape, let's say, or no, you could give him that. Let's say- uh, you think I was gonna say, if I'm in 24 minute shape, I've lost a leg or something, what's going on? Uh, I, I, today I'm probably in 20 minute 30 set shape, but but um, but pretty soon I'll be back to sub 20. Yeah, okay, so let's say you're in 20 minute shape, I'm in 15 minute 5k shape. I let you go all five minutes before and um, yeah, I'll see if I can chase you down over five k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when, when I'm in, when I'm in sub twenty set, I'm not. I, I put none of my five k. Uh, one day, I simply won't be able to run sub twenty five k's anymore. That that day will happen. But at the moment, I still have the potential to get myself in the place to do it. And and it, it was a huge goal of mine. I started off running five k's at forty two minutes. Uh, it took me a long time to get down to to sub twenty. So for me, sub twenty is my um. It's it's, it's uh, that that's the thing of most value to me. If anyone says you know, what's your biggest physical achievement, it, it's it's being able to run a sub twenty five k from such a low starting point. So yeah, I never do anything with my five k's on the internet if I'm not doing them. So for example, when I raced against that 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 little kid Louis. Uh, I knew I was going to go sub twenty. I wasn't going to get beat and also do a rubbish time. So yeah, as soon as I, as soon as I'm under twenty minutes, um, yeah, I can. I, it'd be quite fun to be chased down because that I'm someone that that. The, 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 the more I, I kind of run off my ego so it doesn't really matter where I am in a race if there's someone near me or catching me or just in front of me as far as I'm concerned that's the race you know we might be 100th position and 99th position as far as I'm concerned we're first and second 
So I, I love I love that kind of um yeah, that kind of that push. Yeah. In one of the more recent videos I watched you, you took off with a park run leader. Uh, and in that park run, I think the leader ended up doing I don't know, it was a pretty pretty quick time, like seventeen minutes. I think you came in sixth in around twenty minutes. It was a bit of an off road course. But hey, as soon as that gun wins, you you weren't letting him go. You were hanging on for as long as you possibly could. So you've obviously got a very competitive edge in you. So Train hard for this challenge, but don't train too hard because I, I need to hunt you down towards the end, please. Well, so so good to chat to you. Um, you know, I've personally learned a lot. Uh, I learned that I need to spend a lot more time on YouTube videos if you want to make them world class. Um, but hey, it's all fun and games at the end of the day, um, especially my side. I'm enjoying it. Um, and thanks for putting out your content out there. Um, it's really cool. Good to catch up with you and, and can't wait to see what's to come. Yeah, no, no, you're welcome. And also anybody listening that, that's getting into YouTube should also know that there are kids that just film stuff on their iPhone in 10 minutes, upload it and get 20 million views. So um, there are other ways to go about it. <laughs>